What's good, family? Welcome to another episode of An Honest Conversation about Hip Hop. It is I, Hip Hop O Head, D Moraney, and uh, I'm here tonight with me as always, the one and only. It's your boy, Sean Capone, the greatest rapper never known, Mr. Friday Night Hype. We over here posted. Yeah, man, definitely posted on a Friday, ready to get into this. And of course, you know, we got the man in the building, Big Pooh. Fuck your baby mama. Or two. Or two. Maybe three. Depending. So, fellas, how we feeling on this uh, Friday night, man? We good. We good. We good. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> you usually talk about stabbing oh, baby no. mamas. Who would jump in the mix talking about the stabbing baby mamas? Y'all could be the deadly boys of, uh, of stabbing baby mamas. Oh, man. So, everybody good, man? Everybody feeling good? Energy's good? Oh, man, of course. Always. Always bringing that good, man. We're yeah. trying to reciprocate it and get it back, man. Dish it out and give it back. So, that's what we on. Yeah, man, that's what we do. We do dish it out when it comes to, uh, you know, an honest conversation about uh, hip-hop, man. You can go ahead and catch us every Monday morning, uh, 7 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on Big Bad Radio. So, uh, episodes drop there every uh, Monday morning, so wake up with us. You know where you can find us uh, anywhere that uh, podcasts can be streamed or downloaded. That's where we're at. Um, but you can also find us uh, via Lisbon, and, I, and you can just Google us. Honest conversation about hip hop. We're on Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Follow us, interact. Big shouts out to everybody who uh, has been interacting uh, in our Facebook group over the last couple of days. We appreciate you. Uh, big ups to Jason, who's always a uh, who's always checking us out once we get the Skype situation handled. You know, we can have some people come and uh, interact to uh, live across the globe. Um, so, fellas, a lot going down in uh, in the in the world of uh, hip-hop. And uh, this is the first uh, day of summer officially. And uh, we're starting off with a, with some beef on the grill. Mm. Uh, so It's funk season. It's funk season, right? Especially in Cali. That's when it gets active in Cali, right? No, uh, you know. So, uh... You know what? Let's let's start off with the uh, beef and basketball. I guess we'll call it. Um, Dame Lillard and uh, Marvin Bagley. Dame from Oakland, plays for the Portland Trailblazers. Bagley, I'm not sure exactly where he's from. North Carolina, Arizona, right? Is he from Arizona? Mm-hmm. Okay, Arizona, uh, but plays for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, rookie power forward. Uh, both these gentlemen uh, ended up beefing over a conversation of who was the best uh, basketball MC. Uh, most people think it's Dame Lillard and uh, Bagley has something to say about it so the Young Lion came out with a diss record first um, and then they dropped a series of two each so I'm going to start off with you Sime when it comes to uh, first what were your thoughts going in because I know you don't really mess with either's music so this is the first time you heard them actually spitting what were your thoughts Mm. What, what I wanted to say and I've been saving this just for the show I wanted to go on a rant and, and go on social media and, and address this shit. Uh-huh. But man, we've come to a day and age where these athletes are better rappers than rappers. And lyrically, you mean, you mean you mean as far as just this new crop of yeah, no, of no the new crop, okay. yeah, okay, the new you, crop, yeah, no, nah, come on now. I got you. So nah, no, but, no, no, no basketball players, Fane Cole or Ken. No, nah, hell no, 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 no. So no, we're no. talking about some of the people we'll be talking about later. So go ahead. No, nah, but no, nah, I like it, man. I, I think it's, it's it's good for the art. You know, they going back and forth. I'm, they ain't got a little personal or whatever, but I don't think it's gonna, you know, it, it's gonna carry over into carry else. over or, or escalate. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah. I mean, I, I liked it. I think they both they both did their thing. And if if you ask me where they were at after listening to the both tracks, I honestly, I know Dame is nice and I know he can do better, but I, I'd have to put it as a draw. Mm, okay, you so know. so are you looking forward to a round three, or it should just be done? No, I think it's entertaining. I'm okay. looking for for a round three. I mean, uh, or forward to a round three uh-huh. because they, they're actually, you know, they're nice with it, man. They're they're in pocket. They're rhyming on beat. You know what I mean? And like I said, it, it's actually refreshing to hear you know hear cats battle that it's not one sided. No, oh, okay. What about you, Big Poop? I know you're not familiar with either before uh, before tonight. <coughs> so just based off what you heard, what are your thoughts? Uh, what I heard, it was it was cool. I mean, people actually rhyming against each other where it wasn't like like just 
I, how can I say it? This day and age, because of, I'm going to blame it on NWA. Mm. Motherfuckers don't even battle with um, rhymes anymore. It's more talking and, you know, explicit shit instead of actually battling with bars. So right. It's a it's a breath of fresh air. I like this shit. Um, from what I heard, it kind of sound like um, Dane would polarize this nigga if it really <laughs> came down to it on rapping. Right, He right. just sounds more... How can I say that shit? Like, um, He's more polished. polished. More polished, yeah. But you know, I'll listen to it again. You know, I could tell like you know, it just it's just bars. It ain't no like real beef type shit. So right, right, you know, right. I like it. Yeah, no, I agree with both of you guys. I was I was shocked. I was I knew that Dame rapped. I heard a couple of freestyles, but I never checked the music out because I think personally I was scarred once I heard like Dana Barrows. Remember that whack ass NBA album that got put out uh, I don't where it was real album. rappers and it was and it was NBA cats. So it was like Dana Barros and like I think the Beat Nuts or something like that and and uh, I forget who was paired up but there was actually cats that was rapping I forget uh, I just remember Dana being uh, he was like on some fushnicking type stuff it was it was, it was <laughs> super it was super trash Dana but that was like in the mid '90s when that shit came out if I'm not mistaken and uh, so with that you know to me okay I'm, I was, I remember Shaq doing his shit and Shaq was probably we have to talk about the greatest. NBA rapper, it's probably Shaq. You know what I mean? Tony Parker did his little French vuvuvava ulula shit, and then Iverson basically never had his album see the light of day. Yeah. Um, different time, you know. David Stern wasn't playing with that. Uh, would you call him a uh, Jay Z, white Jay Z? Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, Adam Silver, <laughs> yeah, Adam Silver, whatever. Um, looks to be a little more, um, looks lenient, to be less, yeah. yeah, restricted, more lenient, more understanding of. of, of the culture and how hip hop and basketball are kind of tied into one. So I think this is dope to see them doing what they're doing. Elevating. You know, hopefully it stays where it stays. You know, Dame being from Oakland probably has a whole bunch of knuckleheads who are around him and might feel, you know, some disrespect towards uh, the way, towards some of the shit Bagley might be saying. But hopefully it just stays on wax. And uh, Dame's got a new album coming out. He's got a song with Sadiq. I think I was reading the the next project might be uh, produced by Rafael Sadiq for those of y'all who don't know him on a last name basis but um, if that's right, something in the mix musical. that's going to mm. be pretty dope so salute to uh, both them young gentlemen and hey it's keep it coming man yeah, we, you know, we, it's we, summer, we fans and we appreciate it's that it's a summer they're off you know Bagley go work on your game and get the Kings a little better before you start running your mouth against you know somebody who's made the playoffs you gotta put some work in because uh, at the end of the day, Dame can always hold that over his head. Like, True that. I'm a superstar in the league. He's still learning. Like, he said that in the song, you know? So, uh, I, I I was definitely shocked. I thought it was going to be much worse than what, uh, than what nah, it was, of course. actually was. Um, so, some real beef. Uh, after uh, Buck was in, a, I think, a, a supermarket with his chick and some 50 fan goon. And I read different shit. Somebody said 50 sent him. Uh but some people are saying it's a fan went and you know was talking uh, a lot of smack about him and the uh, and uh, damn what's the phrase now I'm sorry the transgender person um, Young Buck drops Fofty a diss uh, record of course aimed at Fifty uh, said some really obscure shit wrote a song that none of us had ever heard before <laughs> had a YouTube to find out what the fuck it was but it was evident Buck wrote the shit because Fifty sounded like. Yeah. You can it tell in the record. first 30 seconds. Right, yeah. right, right. So, start with you, Pooh. You heard the record for the most part. What do you feel about, about I mean, just your thought process? Or, or how you feel about Buck at this point, Dissing 50? Um, I feel like at this point, it's um, it's a reach. It's 50 polarized this nigga, like, online. Not on wax, but online. And Buck is just, in my opinion, trying to stay relevant. And I, uh, conniving ass nigga like 50, I think he won't even respond to this shit just so Buck could just lay out there and die slow. Mm. You know what I mean? The, the track was, you know, it, it reminded me of a lot of these new um, beefs where a nigga would start off and just take a light shot to get somebody to respond. Because he said a few little things in there, but it wasn't like nothing devastating. Right, jabs. It, kinda, it was just like a little jab, tapped his chin a little bit to see if 50 would say something. But I don't know. I, I really don't, I don't think 50 would give in. We'll see. What about you, Sam? What you think? Yeah, I think, I mean, he had Buck against the wall. You know what I mean? So Buck got to either respond or catch him in traffic. You know Buck is with the shits. You know what I mean? So if he catch him in traffic, I, I think, you know, something will really go down. Literal shit or? 
<laughs> I was gonna say there's a couple references. Yeah, buck against the wall, oh, buck <laughs> with the shit. So you know, I, 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 I didn't, and I didn't mean any of that, yeah, you old yeah, gay I'm motherfuckers to, and no, shit. I'm just saying, I'm just, you, you were, you were, you were oh, taking oh, shots. Motherfuckers, hey, home. motherfuckers had the parade last week. And you see where my partner's trade and thought is and shit. You were taking shots. No, no I'm not this, taking shots. I'm not taking shots. I hear the subliminals, homie. It's no subliminals. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, that man, fifth is. He's over here killing whatever what whatever integrity this man has. So right. he gotta definitely say something. I mean, I, I thought it was cold, man. I mean shit. It I mean, they're both in bad positions. I mean the, the transgender shit he's got an answer to or whatnot, because he hasn't addressed that. But then I mean Buck was getting personal with fifty and he, he know fifty, unlike we know fifty. Right. And I thought that some of the shots that some of the shots that he took, you know, the the ghost writing or whatever wasn't that big, but I think I think the coldest the the coldest line or the coldest bar he was uh, talking about is you know being a father like fifth and I was like man yeah, that's that w- as as a man yeah. you know what I mean I hey you whatever people choose to do you know what I mean in the privacy of their own home that's that's their business but you know not being a father and being on a platform and being that paid to not take care of your business I think that's a colder shot to me I, and you know what I agree with you I, I feel that if any man tells you that you're not a good father you automatically have to catch a fade with that individual because that's you know yeah that's a, that's, that's a shot at your manhood that's a shot you know? directly at your, at your manhood you know what i mean and uh um i you, you like you said buck knows 50 a lot better than you know the majority of artists and i'm sure these people who he's punking you know for money uh, or not punking for money but you know or set, trying to collect loan or money whatever, and yeah. doing this little silly loan shark shit um you know I think Buck is in a different position. I just think, and I don't know if this is 100% correct, but from what I understand is that 50 can limit what Buck does, put mm-hmm. music out and shit like that. So for Buck, I think you you got to go all in. Because I this said, is, he's, yeah, he's, he's against the wall. This is, a, this, is a, this is a no-win situation for him. Because if he murders Fifth on, the, on, on, you know, with his beef or whatever, he probably doesn't get released out of his contract. Mm-hmm. But then, obviously, 50, like you said, has no mercy. You know, he's just killing him. So, he's in a rock between a hard place. And well, He's just not in a good position, man. Yeah, Period. Unfortunately, I don't know how Buck gets himself out of that position, really. Yeah. I mean, we getting... We, I mean, it, like I said, I like the track. I like how he's coming in. And, I mean, me personally, I like Buck artistically as far as a spitter. I like him better than 50. And he gonna come with, with bars, but... I mean, he's just probably beating a dead horse, man. Where do you put Buck in the order of uh, G G unit members not named Fifty? Nah, not he's he's two. Uh, he's Lloyd two. to me, Lloyd Banks is, Lloyd is, is the hardest. Okay, what about you, Pooh? Is Lloyd your best non Fifty G unit member of the originals? The OGs. We're not counting the game or anything like game that. or prodigy. Um, I don't know. I like the mixtape Banks. Uh huh. Um, as far as the music they put out mainstream, I like Buck better than Lloyd Banks. Banks Banks could rhyme, but I just never really felt none of the, the projects that he put out. I mean, just as a, as an artist, Buck was better. Buck, as, yeah. yeah, Buck was a better artist. Buck had better songs. So is Welcome to Cashville a classic? Hmm. I, or is that just one of the moments that was a really hard album for that time frame, but it, it hasn't, it doesn't resonate well? Because I don't know if people are still bumping shorty got one around <laughs> I mean he, he, had, he had some shit on there see that, that's the thing um I think the word classic is thrown around and used too loosely too much right yeah. like agree at, it depends because it's kind of like Welcome to Casual at the time was a was a hot album because he was a nigga from the south that was actually rhyming now replay value I mean it's been what 10-15 years you really can't say but I think he stood out more on the Bad for Mercy G Unit album when when he was introduced when Yayo was gone. That's the one where Yayo was on the wall, yeah, like spray painted or some shit. I think okay, Buck yeah. stood out then. Um, but it, it's kind of hard, man, because nowadays, like with airplay and shit like that, it could be an album that was dope, but because it got so many spins, a nigga just don't want to hear it. Like when I hear yeah. songs off of All Eyes on Me, I want to frisbee that shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. And Pac was a legend, but just certain shit, you hear it, so many you hear times. it like. Even like a lot of Biggie shit, and I think it's yeah. because they might have passed away that it got extra spin. Extra. And, mm-hmm. I don't want to hear that shit at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I stopped listening to uh, K Day. 
uh, the new KD or whatever. Yeah. Because it was just shit that I've heard way too. I've heard uh, West Side Connection way too many times. I've heard we talked about this a couple shows back. I don't want to ever hear regulate again. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. No, I'm I with don't. You, man. you know, I just and that's rest in peace, Nate, man. You know, so talented, so dope. Yeah, so um, more dope tracks. And it's yeah. just a type of track. Like you could play. Uh, Ain't no fun that the homies uh, can't have none, or for me, explosive every day of the week, and I'd be cool. Regulate, nah, I'm good. But when you overplay those types of songs, you're going to, you know, turn people off to, you know, some of those some of those older ones. So yeah, pot big. Uh, there's some shit off pun. It's album I don't want to hear. Like there's some shit I just don't want to hear anymore. It's dope. I acknowledge it, but like early Snoop shit, even though I never liked it, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to hear fucking uh, Snoop Doggy Dog from the depths of the sea. Like, no, nah, I'm, mm. I'm cool. Get that shit out of here. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? And it's crazy when you say that, because when I was thinking, that's one of the albums that stuck out to me. Like, the, to me, Dog Food is a classic, no doubt in my mind. But that shit got so much airplay back then. I don't want to hear uh, Doggy Dog World. I don't want to hear Gin and Juice. I don't right. want to hear... None of that shit. I don't even want to hear it. Ain't no fun. Yeah. Because th- yeah. that shit got so much airplay with the words edited out. I don't want to hear that shit again. So does that make an album a classic because it, it spun so much that it played itself out? So my thought is, because you're talking about doggy style, my thought is, and we had this, I think we were talking the classic uh, conversation. Maybe we never did the show. But we're going to come in here and we're going to talk about what albums we thought were classic. And I think that doggy style because of its mass popularity and the, and how it's oversaturated, I think has lost some of the value on it and the music doesn't really have the same meaning and message that it had. And so I think when we're talking about like the greatest albums ever, like when when you have the best of the best, so to speak, right? You you know, okay, these are the, all the albums that we consider the classics. Now, how do we determine what albums are better than those ones that were saying classics. Not all music, not all ideas are created equal, right? So there can't be, oh yeah, uh, it was written is just as dope as, you know, Reasonable Doubt. No, one of them has to be a better record. So I think, in my opinion, to answer your question, who is when we get to the, uh, you know, the needle, not, not the needle in the haystack, but when we are trying to, you know, thin shit out, um, yeah. If your shit became oversaturated and just doesn't resonate the way it used to and invoke those feelings like it used to, then I have to say that that has to be the separator for the truly great albums that are timeless. Mm -hmm. Because that's what that means. Timeless. No matter when you play it, it's going to be timeless versus the shit that is now sounds dated and sounds played out. So there's a lot of records that we consider classics that probably would fall fall into that, uh, that category of classics for that period Era, of time yeah. but not timeless classics and that's a whole nother conversation that we need to sit down do some research and have a conversation on because i can tell you midnight marauders is one of those timeless classics i mean every decade i've ever thrown it on this shit sounds good it, 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 it's, it doesn't sound like man it sounds old as you know old as fuck where if i go back to ready to die ready to die that shit sounds old as fuck and i love it but there's some shit that you know uh, Give me the loot. It's dope, but when I hear "Give me the loot," I think like, "Damn, it's old. Look at how old this shit sounds." <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I mean, and again, that's no disrespect. You know what I mean? Uh, I just listened to it uh, this morning. "Sucker for Love," one of my favorite pop tracks, but that shit sounds old as fuck mm. and doesn't sound as clean and clear as shit would have sounded now if they'd have been able to do. You know, something like that. So it's just, you know, you have those records, and uh, Regulate happens to be one of those <laughs> fucking records. I don't, I never liked that shit. In 93, I didn't like that shit. And, and it's crazy because that shit gets jumbled into Death Row, but that wasn't even a Death Row album. Right, but it was just the association with Nate Dogg and the whole Long Beach, and, and yeah. so, you know, the, the, the Dove Shack and shit like that, you know. Uh, the twins. There was a lot of that shit that Death Row and I guess the Compton Long Beach movement got a lot of cats. Um, I guess I don't want to call the joints subpar joints, but they made these joints that weren't really great joints so much better. You know what I mean? I I, I liken that to the to remember Shady Shiest? 
where I want to be, riding mm-hmm. with my homeboys. Carnival, it was like a carnival. Yeah. So Shady Shice was kind of at the end of the run what? where the, like the West Coast was still kind of doing it. And he got on the map with like corrupt. And uh, the dude who managed him was a uh, old boy from a Power No Six. Can't remember his name right now. Demiza. It was Demiza presents. Uh, Shady Shice and they had all kinds of other people from Long Beach and no cats on the records. And people love Shady Shice. I want to say he had like three or four s- singles at the time that were. Did they love that nigga outside of LA County though? Because I, I never even listened to none of his shit. Um, you know, I can't, I don't know if he was a, if he was an internet, I don't know if he was a nationally known. I don't know if New York was fucking with where nah, I wanted to be and shit. I don't, think, shit so. Like I don't that. think so. But out here, he was, out here, he had this, he, he was buzzing and he had, and he had a, you know, he was definitely popular. But, but the, I think Death Row's popularity gave a lot of cats the opportunity to to get their shine on and to get a look that they probably wouldn't mainstream wise. And, and 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 to take it back, it, not just Death Row, but I mean, with the production, I think they were they were so ahead of their time flipping the, the uh, they they say the G Funk sound or whatnot, but I think with the production with Daz coming of age and then fucking with Dre, you know, super fly like. You had some super fucking producers right, producing right, right. all that shit, so that's that's why they were on top. As far as that's when production became really, really important. As far as with the industry and, and shaping and shifting the uh, West, you know what I mean. It, it took us into the street shit, you know what I mean. So yeah, that became. I mean, the West has always had that staple. Again, when we talk mainstream, that staple uh, West Coast sounds. You know what I mean. And, and we'll talk later about a, a youngster who's part of that movement changing that. But um, you know, Death Row, and I know we're talking about something completely different now. But you know, Death Row, that imprint on the on the West Coast is still on the West Coast. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, just with the music and, and the sound. Um, but uh, overall, I, I mean, times have changed. And the, the West now is is would you say more mimicking than than standing out? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, really, it we we got I mean we got production and in, in identities here, but I mean other than Kendrick, I don't think anyone has anything that's tailor made that they and and even Kendrick is if if you look at his style and everything, it's all bitten. You know what I mean and. Cats, I understand you pay respect to who influences you and stuff like that, but you, you do that in the track, but you don't mimic the whole style and, you know, do it on three or four albums. So, so let's, let's talk about that, because you and I have always had a conversation with Ken, about Kendrick. Um, I call him, uh, I haven't called him this in a while, but uh, uh, what was it, Marshall Benjamin? Because to me, he has a whole lot of Eminem influence and a whole lot of Andre influence. He just loves his very, mama, that's all. From the very beginning, when I heard him, and that's not to shit on him. He's dope as fuck, but that's who I heard, mm-hmm. and so that's why I was kind of like, yeah, I'm cool, you know what I mean? Like, and so I, again, I understand his brilliance. I went back and listened to shit that I Section 80. I didn't listen to that, you know. I'm not gonna front like I'm Kendrick Head Day One because the first time I heard him, I was like, man, he just reminded me of mm-hmm. Eminem mixed with uh, Andre. with Andre. Um, but so he is the superstar in the West, and uh, when we uh, had discussed. The uh, face of gangster rap, and, and uh, we talked about that. We uh, posted it online, and uh, Cat Out of Pasadena, B uh, Dub, stated that he feels that the, I asked him who the new face of the West was. And so you said, Hey, who do we have out here besides that? So I asked both of you guys, fa- New face of the West. He says Mozzie. what you say, please? New face of the West. Ooh. Now that now that Nip is gone, because that's what he said. He said Nip was that face of the West. I don't agree with that. I don't. I don't. I don't even think that. that. Yeah. As far as the new face of the West, no, nah. hell no. It's messed up, man. Because it, 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 man, they didn't show him love when he was living like that. So, you know what I mean? So before, so Nip, nobody, so nobody said that. Nip was, was alive. Breathing. Who was the new face of the West? New face of the West. They're, they're, I mean, to be. Or is Kendrick too big to wear and still young, so where Kendrick in, encompasses well, Ken, all? Yeah, right now Kendrick is the West. You know what I mean? And, oh, up for, and for, for the respected West Coast MCs, so to speak, I understand the whole Nip LA thing. It's to me, like I said, it's biased. The Crip niggas. I said it last week. Yeah, it, it's biased, but 
because in my opinion, and it's, it's a mixture of both sides of the fence, I believe every nigga in TDE, the original four, are better than Nipsey. Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. So, Musically, I, yes. Yeah, yes. you know what I mean? So, I agree. I can't say Nipsey was the face of the West, but I would say as a whole, TDE is probably the hottest shit on the West. Uh, Kendrick, I, I've been to Kendrick day one since before, and right. niggas even knew who the fuck he was. Right. You know what I mean? When he was K-Dot. And um, that, I think, you know, not to veer off topic, what we do. I, I think um, <laughs> when he when he made it mainstream, then he became more animated. Before yeah. he became famous, then he wasn't sounding like Andre or Eminem. He was just spitting like a, you know a regular MC who was spitting. True, well, I give you that because Section Eighty didn't have none yeah. of that shit. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. It's kind of hard because he's been out of the spotlight. I would say for the last year and a half, two years, and it's, we kind of live in a moment where it's who's out there now. I don't know, man. It's, it's 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 really rough to even say who's the the face of the West. And I think the whole industry is, is mimic. Like everything is mimic. Like who's the face of New York? The original face of New York. It's kind of like the NBA in the in the in the uh, G League. You know what I mean? And Kendrick is the NBA, and everybody else is in the G League. You know they got hey they got their they got their squads up, and you know what I mean they're playing. But you know it, is is it meaningful games? I don't think so. So you know is Mozzie I mean? then? the next to blow on the west coast if we had established who was behind kendrick who do you think is behind kendrick or or is is ready to take that next jump into the mainstream spotlight when it comes to to the west coast and i i don't like i, I don't know if, if like mozzie is a real cat you know what i mean he make real music and i i just don't know if he got that 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 personality and he got that aura about him to be that superstar you know what i mean like he's been making music and he's consistent and mozzie tour a lot so i don't understand why he's not a, a national name and i don't think if he's if he hasn't hit it yet i don't know if he's ever gonna you know eclipse into something bigger you know what i mean i don't think mozzie has that one for the radio yet. yeah and no that's what i'm saying I, I, did, yeah. I don't think he's willing to take that i just i don't know if he's musically that in in depth you know what i mean i i think he is because i've heard you know some of the shit he's he's written and he's you know even though i think a lot of times the shit i've heard so i don't i don't know if it's official mozzie shit or just shit he gets buys beats from internet niggas or, or internet niggas send him beats and he just does something but the stuff i've heard i think the production has kind of held him back yeah, to true. where he's not able to really you can only you can only really go so far with said type of beat or whatever you know what i mean so Fucking with the same producer yeah, so, yeah so like i think that's a big thing what it is with mozzie is he came in the game with his team and he stayed loyal to that and um so his sound is it's crazy because a few years ago i used to listen to mozzie you know when i start liking somebody i would branch out and listen to all the understudies and, and um they all stuck to the same production which got them where they are i haven't heard him on top level production yet and honestly I just don't know if he has it to be that next star but I'll tell you someone who's getting a push and I would never ever thought this nigga would get that much push because in the beginning I thought he was trash who was that it, it seemed like for whatever reason the industry is starting to elevate J-Rock yeah J-Rock is uh, is getting a lot of respect uh, uh, you know his, the album he put out was critically acclaimed um, he was nominated for the Grammy uh, Keita Compton so I, I think people are slowly starting to appreciate J-Rock. I think he is probably the most underrated uh, member of TDE when you talk to people. Um, you know, Ab Soul might be the most overlooked, but definitely when you talk to people, they know about his skills. Mm -hmm. I think kind of J-Rock, for me, was kind of, he was pushed to me like, oh, this is the, this is the real street dude mm -hmm. from, you know, not, not saying that uh, Schoolboy Q isn't, but J-Rock, for whatever reason, just came off a little... Uh, a little more authentic mm -hmm. um, uh, so that's how he was always pushed to me and then going back and listening to his music as always he hella late um, I was like okay yeah this is he's, he's dope as fuck you know what I mean so I would like to see that happen yeah. um, I think for me the cat that I see making moves and being pushed um, is g Easy, a white kid from uh, from the Bay uh, I didn't even know he's from California yeah he's from the Bay so he's getting he's getting pushed, and I can see him, you know, because he's doing those records. You know, he's got the record with the but he's gonna have girl instant and appeal and shit like that with him being well, he's a got, little white so, boy. So, but but he's got some street shit, 
that street niggas fuck with to validate, and then he's got the ability to cross over. So it's gonna be real interesting to I see. I don't know. I ain't never what, heard what, that. Why do you say listen me, to Jesus? Put me on it. I, I haven't yeah. even had a chance. <laughs> no, what's I, the street shit that he got? Because I didn't even fucking heard <laughs> no, it. No, no. He's like if you listen to his little tapes, turf tapes, Stro- stroking off in the alley and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's got. He's got <laughs> shit on the shingle. <laughs> shit on the shingle. He's definitely got. He's definitely got those mainstream records. Yeah, that noodles, that, noodles that with parmesan and shit, man. That he's definitely the looking fuck? at. But uh, he has, you know, that shit that they, you know, ride around in scrapers to in the bay. Yeah. I don't know what um, off the top, but when I went and did a little bit of research, he had that. He has a mix of it both. So you know, yeah. but he's getting that industry push. Well, yeah, of course, you know. Uh, somebody was getting industry bush. Let's talk about this real quick. Uh, Little Nas X. So he's returned with Panini and a fucking uh, EP featuring Cardi B. So who wants to give their opinion on Panini and, and Little Nas X first? Nah, I'll give it. Uh, I, I listen to the track. I mean, it's not to my liking, but, you know, being an artist and listening how they constructed it. You know, with with different melodies and bridges, it's a well written track, and I can I can see what they're trying to do. I don't think the kid is responsible for all of it. I think, you know, he, he definitely got help and they got a mission. And you know, hey, you got to capitalize on on this hit. It, it's hard to duplicate, you know, a smash single that you weren't expecting to have a smash single on. So, you know, they had to go into the pocket and. You know, going to the think tank to have a follow up because it, it's either make or break for him. You know, because he really doesn't have a catalog, so and he's still a young yeah, he's kid. Got one song. That's what I'm saying. The, the CP. So it's 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 either now or never. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. Think about Pooh. Yeah, you, I agree. I mean, it's kind of hard to follow up Ice Ice Baby and shit. So, <laughs> no, yeah, right. No, but that's real shit though. That's perfect because. Go ahead, Pooh. I mean. Hey, it, it, it happens. You come out the gate with a, a smash. You would most people will never reach that height again. Yeah. You know, and you know the 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 vultures are out there. They're trying to capitalize, so they're gonna put the money behind it because that shit crossed over. He's he's different. Um, like you said, it's not my it's not my lane of shit that I would listen to. But hey, you know, I, I can see what's happening. I mean, they put Cardi on it. I just seen Cardi one. Songwriter, Songwriter of the year. Shout out to Cardi. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, it's like Cardi Songwriter of the Year for real. Like this bitch can barely speak English. Good. Oh, oh damn! That ain't that ain't no shot, you know, at her nationality. Hey, but like the that. Girl, but the ladies are feeling her, boo. The hoes are feeling her. The, the hood oh, rats. Uh, I don't I don't really know. Well, I ain't gonna say all hood rats, but. I say the inner city is hey, in there. The, the hood, women, hey, are, the women, hood, are, hey, hood rats and inner city bras have feelings too, Pooh. <laughs> well, I, 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 I know, I know they do. I, I've been smashing these ducks. Uh, uh, quack, quack. But yeah. I mean, I, I, I respect real MC female femcs, what they call them. Right, right. Cardi B's not one of them, but I, I respect the grind. The bitch came out the strip club, got to the paper. I, I'm, I'm not gonna hate on that because shit, if if, if I can. Make some bullshit, and I'm a, and I'm a realist when it comes to this music shit. But life is hard, my nigga. If, if I can put out one track right now and set myself up and my family set up, I'm gonna do that shit. And it goes against my code of hip hop, but I got enough respect for myself where it wouldn't be no garbage shit. And I'm never gonna let a nigga write for me ever in life. But if some shit caught on, then nigga, I do it. So I respect that part of it. But as an MC, she's she's trash. Like scale of one to ten, I give the bitch a two, mm. straight up. But it, it, but that's 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 the. But that's the game right now because of, she is not an MC, and she probably be the first to tell you she's not an MC, but she is an entertainer. You know what I mean? Or she's a rapper. You know what I mean? She falls into that category. Everything is, everything is for the you know the follows and the likes and shit like that. So I mean that's that's she's where the poster she's at. child of what's wrong with hip hop. You know, it's a gang of Cardi B clones out here now. All these bitches talk about they, they pussy and they titties and they ass. And how but it, good, but how it's not. Head. But it's not. It's man. You can't blame her for what's wrong with hip hop because that's society itself. I'm, you I'm, know what I, I mean? I'm not. I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying she's garbage and it's a lot of garbage ass clones. Like we we clown all these young niggas who come out with this whack ass music because they're mimicking the shit that's successful. But we got a lot of hood rap bitches doing the same shit as Cardi, and the shit is trash. And that's so, the way I look so, at it. so let so let me ask you this because I I agree as far as um, there are a lot of Cardi clones out there. 
I also agree with Simon where, hey, get your get your paper. Now, with the with the Songwriter of the a Year Award, it just goes to the person who is credited with the most Hit. hits. So if I'm not mistaken, I want to say Offset uh, won this a couple years ago when the Mingos uh, put their shit out. He said the Mingos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So still ain't getting it right, I'm man. Never, you know what? I'm never gonna get it right. I'm lucky I got offset. I didn't. I usually call them offside. Hey, we are gonna start a GoFundMe nah, account for this motherfucker GoFundMe. to go to Atlanta for two weeks and get that fucking just, name right. Just think, of, just think of Amigo but without the A. Yeah. If I don't, you know me. If I don't, and this motherfucker speak more Spanish than all of us and shit, it's man. It's not about me not fit, not mentally being able to pronounce this shit. Then what the fuck is the I'm problem? Not going to, because they do not. Huh, deserve, Tyson. Listen, we're, we're, on a, we're on a hip hop show. And they do not deserve the uh, the correct oh, pr- uh, pronunciation. So who's who's worse, them or Cardi? Let me uh, be real, D. You a real MC for for uh, for real? Who's worse? So if I if I, if I'm gonna listen to an album, I'm gonna listen to Invasion of Privacy because the writers wrote better songs. See, I, I've never heard of Amigos. So if album. you listen to well, if you listen, I've heard the one, the last one they put out with uh, Bad and Bougie or whatever. Is the shit catchy? Yes, it is. Um, lyrically, they're not really doing nothing, you know. Um, shit, they had a remix with Cardi and Nicki where Cardi and Nicki had the best verses on the fucking mm. remix. It was called Motorsport or something like that. So, I, people, you know how I am. I don't pronounce, uh, you know, I'm not going to pronounce their shit correctly until they get it together. Mm. And they, we need to see some growth from them as a trio, as a, as, as a solo. Uh, they've all put out solo projects now. You know, I want to see some uh, growth from the Mingos. Before I start giving them their uh, they respect, you know what I mean. So uh, that's just that's just uh, my opinion on that. To be honest with you, um, so let's go back to little, little Nas X because I, I salute to him, salute to his team. The songs are well written. The first time I heard it, I was like, man, it's some bullshit. The, the titles bullshit, uh, but I listened to it two, three, four more times, and I said, okay, people are gonna like this. I'm not fucking with it. Mm. You, you know, do that shit four times. <laughs> I had to, so I can come in here and talk about it. Oh, okay. I, and plus, I, un- I when I heard it, I understood what they were doing. It has a hook. It has a bridge. It's short. It fits the formula of what people want to do today. And here's the biggest thing: I sat back and I said, "Is it the talent of these kids that they can't write a three-minute song, or is there something deeper than that?" Mm. And when I think about it, if you have a two-minute song to get your fix for that song. You're probably going to have to play it multiple times, right? And I'm not in the industry, but mm, don't plays. you think you're getting streams and plays and mm. shit like that if they're very short? You're or, smart. Uh, uh, probably, probably so you get more plays. And then, I don't know, I think these bass rock babies. <laughs> they are, um, <laughs> bass! Their, How their, their, their attention span may not be, oh, be able to sit through a fucking four and a half minute track of four, you know. and that's true and every, people want shit quick and attention spans are shorter but I thought it from the I thought it from the standpoint of you have shorter songs it's gonna get played more that's for you to yeah. satisfy what it is that you need you know what I mean it's true it's true because this day and age everything is fucking online yeah if you watch an interview on, on fucking YouTube niggas breaking the shit down to 15 parts just to get multiple yeah. Clicks on this shit. Exactly. So it yeah. Exactly. So it's obvious he's got a good team behind him. They put they put together a well structured sound that is again something you can't really put into the urban bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is a second single that doesn't sound like it's a traditional rap or hip hop single. So they are using this kid to test the boundaries of where they can where continue can go. to take yeah. the art form. Because whenever they do take hip hop and they bend it, they never use someone who looks like us. Mm. They use somebody that they, they use somebody that looks completely different, so that a, another crowd is completely crowd is, is fine with that. Yeah, accepting so, of it. Yeah. So now they're using someone who looks like us is 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 brown, dark brown skinned, and well, they're gonna see where this goes. If we take this somewhere else, can we get some other people to start buying into this? And what can we do? So, um, you know, he's a young kid. I hope he's got a good lawyer. I hope his papers right. I hope he comes away from this. Uh, being able to live his dream, you know what I mean, and and, and uh, not having a complete crash and burn after this does whatever it does, does you know settles, what I mean? yeah. when's the album coming out, what's the album gonna look like? So I'm definitely gonna pay attention to this because I believe that this he's a, he's what they say industry plant, somebody that they fabricated and 
and just you know like Jermaine Dupri walking up to fucking crisscross in the mall and saying hey y'all y'all two cats want to be rappers and next thing you know jump 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 right let's not say it didn't happen back in our day uh, it's been happening since fucking uh, Barry Gordy and and, uh, and what was my man uh, from uh, with New Edition hmm Transvan? No, the the guy that put New Edition oh, together. Oh, Maurice Starr. Maurice Starr. So it's yeah. been happening, and uh, so it, this is not a new era thing. This is a music business thing. But I'm gonna be keeping my eye on to see where he goes. I haven't listened to the EP yet, so to see where that's going. But uh, just very interesting shit. And you think that consider that? You, do you consider that hip hop, or do you think it's more pop? I don't. I think it's more no, of a pop, pop record. But pop. you know, again, they're gonna take that and they're gonna push it and try to run with it as far as they can to see. See where they can go or where they can what take it. They can cross. Yeah, I've already seen just rolling through Instagram. I'm starting to see now the country hip hop records. You know what I mean? Where where the, the Willie Nelson samples with little trap beats and shit like that, and you know, um, terrible. Talking about swinging on moonshine and you know people just trying to do whatever they can do to now ride that wave. You know what I mean? My son loves the fucking record. You know, <laughs> thanks on the fucking damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but uh. You see the kids and performing at the high school, the fucking little kids are loving it. So, you know, uh, it's a safe record. I'll give it to it you. Is, I mean, I'm not gonna hate on that because, like you said, we grew up around. Is is as much as we want to say, oh, we had the golden era and this and that. We had a lot of we had a lot of crossover shit too Ooh, that wasn't like, like like whoop there it is. Not even that. Like even niggas, people, people respect <laughs> like niggas respect Heavy D. Yeah, but that was a jiggling. Dancing around ass nigga that I never fucked with. All right, yeah. Okay, so we gonna stop the heavy D slander right there. <laughs> That's not happening I on this that, podcast. I said that on purpose. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> so we gonna definitely, we gonna diddly diddly definitely not no, go there with the, <laughs> with the heavy D slander. Yeah, now that we have love, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, nah, you know here, what? Man. At the end of that, and we keep it rough, rugged, and raw, and heavy D is one of my. Idols when it comes to being a fat nigga. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, now now that we found Harry love, Barry, though. Uh, much love, heavy rest yeah, in peace. Yeah. Uh, now that we found love was definitely something. Now I look back and I was like, I can't believe I was fucking. But, but you know what though? You know, I know I didn't I bent, to, I didn't bent the fucking subject again. Yeah, um, that's what we do. This is an honest conversation about hip hop. You know, so it, it was, we it was talk a, about everything. It was a mixture though. We had an era with that new Jack Swing era where it all was relevant. So yeah. no hate. Don't yeah, no, sound. no, no hate. And that was the that was yeah the beginning of it and growing and it's changing and now it's starting to grow and it's changing. My issue is though. As it's growing and changing, the quality of the music is 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 becoming whacker. Mm -hmm. So we had whack records, but at least musically they were sound records. You know what I mean? Now these records are just like, come on, man. Say Mingos one more time, and I'm going in on heavy again. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's like that. Uh, Patrice, Shots. That's like that uh, Patrice O'Neill skit. Uh, spell what was it? Restaurant. <laughs> oh shit. Spell banana. Uh, banana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then, then, yeah. <laughs> So we won't talk about the three kids from Atlanta for the rest of the fucking show. Um, but talking about kids, the Freshman Double XL 2019 uh, edition dropped too much avail. Uh, we ran through some music before we started the show. I am going to fuck up all of these people's names, not on purpose, because I didn't know who these people were until today. We heard uh, Comethazine, uh, Tierra Wack. We knew who the baby was. Little Mosey, uh, Roddy Rich from Compton, we're familiar with. YB and Cordy, we're familiar with from the J. Cole uh, response. YK Osiris, uh, Rico Nasty, uh, Gunna, we're uh, familiar with. Megan the Stallion, or The Stallion, we're familiar with. And then at the 10 spot, reportedly voted on by the fans, LA's very own, Blueface. Uh, made the list for the freshman 10. So this list is about who Double XL and I forget what the lady's name is. Believe I think her name is Lisa or something like that. Believe who is next in 2020. So I don't think the baby is a, is you know he's he's doing it now. So he's only going to continue to grow. Same thing with Gunna. His mixtape series is already uh, classics to the youngsters. They're waiting for it or whatever drip season, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, so he's there. Mega the Stallion is 
there now and I don't see she's going on tour someone someone's big is bringing her on tour I don't know exactly who it is but she's part of a big tour this summer so that's just gonna get her more uh, fans doing more festivals so those three I'd say yeah they got them right based on the music that we heard today we all said that YB and Cordy was probably the best out the group he's working with Dre or in some capacity Dre brought him to the studio or something to that effect so maybe he gets there I'm gonna start with you Pooh you heard these people, and I, I don't expect you to know them by name. Like I said, first time we heard them. But just off what you heard, this list, thoughts. Um, I'm going to try not to be hateful. It just, um, it kind of seems like they're going with what's popping now with popular. It, definitely a popularity contest because Blueface hasn't put in enough work. I mean, one song and he's freshman double the cell cover. That just shows you that, um, Hip-hop ain't hip-hop no more. It's, it's, it's a popularity contest. Um, the Baby, I've heard a few tracks of his. That I could actually stomach. He can actually rap. He, he raps. He raps. So uh, I, he's cool. A lot of the other ones I've never heard before. Um, I'm real critical when it comes to females. Megan Thee Stallion. I've, I've heard people actually say that she's the best thing out of Houston, if that's the correct chick, right yeah, now out of all the right. artists. So, you know, if, if that's true, and that's including the men... Then okay, I'll you know it is what she it is. She's a huge cosign from from people who like rap music, yeah, hip hop so music. So. Can't hate on that. Um, yeah. The Roddy Rich cat, I can't say he was he's making moves out here. It's, it's funny though because due to social media, um, I seen um him and Blueface come at the same time. It, it, it's weird because I remember it's, it's a cat online um, named Pookie from Long Beach, a little. A, a nigga who out here in the streets they know him because he promotes, he dance Pookie around. Pookie Rude, right? Yeah, he, FM Pookie Rude. Yeah, yeah. kind of sassy and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that nigga. He um, he put on a show and it was some drama that started because Blueface single took off, so Blueface was the headliner on on a little show that he put together. But on the show, well, you know what? Blueface was on on the ticket and Roddy Rich, and Roddy Rich was the headliner. So Blueface removed they removed Blueface off the tour off the show because Roddy Rich was the headliner and. Blueface took off. Yeah, I heard about that. You know it was what I mean? Drama, yeah. It was some drama. So, it, it, it's he had he had the same buzz as Blueface before the Tatiana record. So I, I think he's gonna do nothing but grow. I'm not really a fan of his style of music, but I do see out here is, is well received. I've seen females that I know, younger females, that that'll take pictures and post it with him like he's a known celebrity. So yeah, you know, I'm not gonna hate on the, on the young kid getting his money. So let me ask you this: being from Compton. Uh, and being a fan of, of Compton music and, and and going through the evolution of Compton music, when you hear a cat like a Rowdy Rich, a cat like A Boogie, or not A Boogie, but a cat like Boogie, or is it A Boogie? Oh, you talking about uh, West Side Boogie. West Side Boogie, yeah. So when you, uh, the key signed to Eminem. So the kid who signed to Eminem, when you hear the music as someone who, you know, bleeds Compton blood, no pun intended, Tell me how you how you feel about that. Um, Boogie, I've actually heard tracks where it seemed like he's just um. I haven't I haven't heard his album. Not gonna lie, but the shit that I was hearing a year or two ago, he sounds like um a TDE clone. Like he could fit right in there with their little circle. So I can uh -huh. actually respect his music. Roddy Rich is like more for the new school. The um the, the what's the new term? The millennials. Like, yeah. I could tell his mama was getting fucked in Luke Records in house parties. He's a youngster. He's a youngster. You know what uh, I mean? I know I'm, I'm being disrespectful as hell. No, no dis. <laughs> no, I'm being disrespectful, disrespectful as hell, but don't disrespect. Yeah. No, he, he's a he's a young nigga. He's, he's I'm I'm probably damn near old enough to be his pops. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So he's a different type. But Boogie kind of is a throwback to the shit that we actually like. So two different styles. I mean, it just shows you in a good and bad way that hip hop is evolving. And I'm sort of happy that everybody don't have to come with no gangbang shit. Cause that's that's why the West Coast that's died. Shit. Cause niggas want to talk about street shit and this and that. And you know it, that 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 lifestyle that a lot of us was raised in and we respected because we lost people in and all that type of shit is what we grew up in. This new generation didn't grow up in that, so right. they moved away from it. And I I respect it. I mean, yeah, it ain't for me, but I don't want my kids mimicking gang shit because I grew up in that shit. So. Yeah, no, I, I feel that 110 percent. Sonic Capone, freshman. Ah oh, man, they, 2019 double XL list. It's 
It's a, it's a popularity contest, man. This shit's like fucking Sadie Hawkins. This is like the dance that. This is like the dance that don't matter and shit. You know what I mean? Like, you, 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 you know what I mean? You throw on a fucking collar shirt and you know what I mean? Just just go out regular. You know what I mean? It's, these cats are young and, and man, it, it shit. Eighty percent of them sound young, you know, as far as musically. So, I mean, I can't not let them. Let them run and bubble. I mean, I ain't got to tolerate the shit, but, you know, like I said, the people that are listening to it are, you know, a lot younger. So, I mean, let them do their thing, but I wasn't I wasn't impressed, really, by any of it. Yeah, neither was I. I don't understand the fascination with the blue faces. I, you know, I just don't. I understand. The more you put somebody on the screen, the more uh, likable they're going to end up being, the more you're going to be brainwashed uh, to like them. So, my question is... Who you alluded to this it's 2019 there's opportunity out there the good and the bad right there's opportunity for the whack cats to get love my question is why is there not a larger driving force behind putting good music in these media outlets that need to be put like you know you have the b-side show shout out to them they they do their thing and of course you have other things but um where, as an independent artist, do you really get to get that push through, uh, you know, a large social media con- uh, conglomerate, especially when you're trying to do things? You know, where, where are the real dope dudes at? Because there's just too many whack cats getting looks. How come the real dope cats aren't getting the same looks? You know what? Um, you know, I guess I have to diss myself with this one and diss people who think like me. Damn. We don't, we don't have the ear for a hit anymore. Uh, it's a new day and age. The shit that we liked has come and gone. You know, I was a Horace Grant with fucking goggles and knee pads. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Them niggas ain't around no more. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Not saying yeah. that he wasn't dope during his time, but right, right. our definition of dope isn't the, the age group or the, the appropriate thing these days. This, the younger generation, their dope is different than our dope. Like... <laughs> The Migos, yeah, that shit is cut. <laughs> shit. The, yeah. the Migos is um is dope to them. They they like the spawns of some of the shit that we heard in the nineties. Right. So you know, our ear for a hit. Like in my car, if you get in my car, majority of the shit I'm playing is from the nineties. And when right. I'm when I'm listening to the shit, I'm like, man, this shit sounds so dated. But it's like nostalgia, so I listen yeah. to the shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Where I mean, even like the the music you you alluded to that earlier, like the drums, the bass, all that shit sounds old and played out now, yeah. but that's just what my ear is and the cats who when i was 15 16 17 in the in the middle of all this golden era great shit the 15 16 17 year old now the shit they listen to is great to them and i it's 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 just rough man we i feel like an old jared tall ass nigga yeah now. definitely you know what I mean? we are definitely bill russell in the crowd flipping off people yeah. taking pictures at us you know at, at a current nba game because even when you when you when you move it like to niggas who actually spitting for these youngsters the spitters for them now is like Meek Mill. You know what yeah, I mean? Like Meek true. gets a lot of love, and that's to them that's a rapper like an MC. So, you know, and no no hate to Meek because I've heard a few things early that I like from him, but I don't know, man. It's just it's yeah. The game is the game has definitely shifted. Simon, your opinion on that? Or? <laughs> nah, I mean, Pooh Poo is right. I mean, the, the game has changed, and. Like I said, it's not about the music no more, man. It's just about an entity and, and what, what you're pushing behind it. You know what I mean? What's the idea? What What's the melody? What's going to catch? You know what I mean? You know, before before coming with a record, you, shit, the artists that were willing to transform into, you know, a commercial artist, they were going to have two or three singles. And that was what they were aiming for on the album and do what they did the majority of the album. Right now, these motherfuckers are pushing. They're, they're pushing for singles, and it's not about the music. I think the love, the love for the music is lost. These motherfuckers are just chasing the bag, and I think that's that's where they compromise themselves is chasing the bag and looking for that hit. You know, they're trying to be little Nas X with that with that bag and, and get that single. Rain on my booty. You know, they're trying to go work on the second single instead of you know putting out a classic record or, or album. Yeah, and I, it's that consumption rate. We need new stuff all the time. My son likes this dude on YouTube named Coyote Peterson. And in Diami's mind, he feels that Coyote Peterson should drop a new video mm-hmm. every single day and doesn't understand that Coyote Peterson has to travel to whatever location he's got to to find whatever shrew, whatever the hell he's looking for, right? Um, so we and the modern internets 
want stuff now. Yeah. Baruch Assault. I want it now type of shit. So, yeah, that changes how, how music is done. Good idea for whoever's listening. If you're a dope artist, you should t- take the DOC's formula and write a song about the formula of how these cats are uh, getting over. These young dudes are getting over in the game, especially someone who know has that knowledge of the inner workings of hip hop in today's uh, you know day and time. Yeah. That would be, yeah, be J. Hard. Cole could do something like that over the formula, talking about how there's so many games going on in the industry. That'd be dope. So speaking of dope, uh, Benny the Butcher has a new uh, EP or project out uh, full of uh, drug raps. If that is your shit. Um, <laughs> and uh, he had a song. He has a song on there, Benny and Black Dot. So I'm gonna start with you, Sime. Uh, we're gonna do something. Who got who? Who do you who do you think had the better verse on uh, on that track? I liked uh, Benny. Ben, Benny was more fluid. He was on on beat, and you know his punches, you know, were more or he had more stinkers. Yeah. So yeah. I think just Benny Benny fit the beat naturally, mm-hmm. and that's 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 his mo. So. You know, he taught that street shit and, uh, you know, metaphorically. Yeah, he you raps. Know, he raps his ass off. Dropped his lines and, and whatnot. So, I mean, that's Benny's lane. I think Benny is a real talented cat. I, I wish he, you know, get more praise and, and get more opportunity to be in linked with who he's linked with. But, you know, Benny's uh, he's a throwback, man. He, he's definitely something that, that we appreciate. What about you, Pooh? You going with uh, Thought? You going with Benny? I'm going to go with Benny. Um... I got a, a few different views on this. Um, I think with the Griselda cast as a whole, I think they're in the perfect spot where they need to be. I don't think they need to ascend any higher. Right. Because if, I mean, they signed with Eminem. If if the Eminem co-sign was any more, then they would just get hate just for fucking with Eminem. So I think they're right in pocket, right under, underneath the radar. They can make a great living and continue to put out music. Uh, number two, what I don't like about the track is you could tell them um, they didn't, vibe in the studio and write that shit together mailed in yeah this this new shit is is, is the songs they, they sound put together because the mcs ain't vibing together like you can tell like to go back to death row when they were putting them tracks together they was getting high and drunk together and it just it all sounds it, yeah it, it sounds was all in the same hotel room off one of pox checks yeah i got that yeah, you know i mean Shots. to me fuck you pop pop <laughs> came at the end of death row i know, I know but around. um like for instance tech nine is a um a credible cat now, the underground oh, yeah. legend, whatever. Right. I've, I've been, you know, I'm late. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm late. I've been watching Rate the Bars the last week or so, I'm just watching it on Facebook, yeah. looking at how they rate bars. And Tech Nine, um, I was respecting his opinion. There was a track that came on with, um, what's her name? I think she's from up north. The, ch- the um, Snow the Product. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, he used to, he at one time tried to sign her. Uh huh. Okay, so. He has a track with Snow the Product. I don't know if yep. it's his track or hers. It's uh, hers. So, one of the bars that he had to rate was hers. Yeah. And um, number one, he was like, "Is this a male or a female?" Like he didn't know. And then he said, "Um, he would have to hear it over a beat, and he gave the shit a two. But he's on the fucking track, right. and that tells you a lot about what's going on right. in the integrity. Well, yeah, yeah. So he tried to sign her. He was in the video because I've seen the video. My wife is a big Snow the Product fan. Um, and he was trying to uh, sign her to Strange, but I, I but I feel you, man. There's too much of that mail-in verse where you can tell they're not together, or the verse doesn't fit what the song is about. You know what I mean? It's just a general. I mean, I got hoes, I got money verse. I, look, even if look, <laughs> even if we mailed in verses, if we're on the same track, how can I not know your verse? It just yeah, well, I've never heard the song, or I just had him show up, do the video, but it's and different because it's an artist. You know what I mean? Like, I've never listened to it more than once. That's crazy, though. Well, I mean, if you think about it, and not saying Tech did this, but if you're a big time artist like Tech is, yeah. and Snow was trying to get on, can you do this song with me? Sure. Do I know a bar I mean, for bar? I understand because you know what? When it, this is a cash grab. Yeah. There's a lot of like I see Boosie every week saying, "I'm gonna be in your city." Hit my DM or whatever, and um, yeah. I got a verse for you. He's just spitting shit and sending that shit off, and ain't even listening to these little niggas. Exactly. Who's buying. And it could be, and it could be. I mean, cause I'm, I'm, I guess I'm an artist, and I'm not on the level nowhere near where these cats are at. But I've had other artists wanting to collaborate with me, but because, because of you know how I create, 
they let me run with the whole track no no hook no verse no nothing so i would be the one creating this shit for them just off of love for the music trying to look out for them and send it back to them so you know they have the perfect reference track you know what i mean because it's their shit but i'm the one creating so who knows if if because there's no hook on the shit. Maybe just sent them the beat. Didn't understand what the fuck. Maybe Benny didn't give him the information and, and could have just, I just said wrong with it. I just think he sent a verse. I don't think he really had a, a beat. Benny kind of tied it in, talking about him a couple miles yeah. from Philly. So I think Benny probably wrote that after the fact. Could have. Um, you know, to ask you real quick, Simon Component, and, 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 and to put it into perspective is, do you think that Cocaine knows your verses from Brims to Laces? Like now? Yeah. Like if you sat down and he was raiding the bars of Brims to My Laces, do you think Cocaine would know that these were signed for poem bars? Even though you are listed in the Guinness Book of World Records for the being part of one of his whatever nah. 20 million collaborations, but yeah. my ego would like to say yeah, but reality, <laughs> reality, reality, reality is because no, he's right? he's worked yeah. with so many artists. So that's his know? micro like you said, Pooh, this is microwave industry that we that we uh, live in now where there, there aren't those strong bonds of, of groups of people together, and that's why when you get a TDE, that's why when you get a uh, what's co- J Cole shit called uh, Dreamville or whatever, the when you get those people man. together, you have a strong unit of people who are making music. Where well, we had those, we had before they were labels, we had the Jungle Brothers, we had the Flavor Unit, you know, we had Rhyme Syndicate, you know, we ha- we had these things before they were actual labels. They evolved into labels. Um, and then that's when you kind of seen the camaraderie change between the people who were, you know, creating music. What was the barbershop quartet? Who was that? That was, uh, was that the Licks and Exhibit? And uh, what was the name of their crew, Pooh? Yeah, I can remember the Liquid Crew. That was that Liquid yeah, Crew. Barbershop crew. Quartet was a uh, another. I think that was Exhibit and some other people. I can't remember who was who was in that was in that crew. I got a quick question for you. Yeah. So the track that I was referring to with Snow and uh, Tech Nine, you said they have a video. They have a video. Okay, so that changes. If there's a video, that means it's not just a, a mailed off track that just you did a version of. Like, y'all actually promoted it. To me, in my opinion, right, it, it changes. But, but, it no, does but, change but it. understand though, with the, with the industry, too, you you could you can you can do a feature and, and you know what I mean. Get get the artist to attempt to promote it. You know what I mean. And it that's where the Hollywood come in. And are they gonna help you promote this shit? Because it motherfuckers is just coming if. If you gonna pay, I'm gonna pay you a couple racks to come shoot the video for me. They gonna, they obviously gonna kick they part and shit in the video to get the shit over with. But do they really give a fuck? And if he was trying to know? sign her, I'm gonna do the video. It doesn't work out. He doesn't sign her. I'm not, he's probably never went back and listened to that track. It's probably something yeah. he just wants to move past. He got over it because there's no value. She's not a superstar. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's there's just, no value for me to go back and reminisce. I don't know. Maybe. Well, it, everything y'all saying is definitely true. I guess. I agree with you though. Like, like the oh, integrity, of, like no, he didn't yeah. even know that it was a female. Like, right, that's right, just right. Whole, like I'm looking at it from her perspective. Like, yeah. how did she feel? Like, damn. Like she stated before that probably was a mistake she made in her career, and he said, "I waited too long. I should have thrown her some money." She went to Virgin or Atlantic. She went to Atlantic, got shelled, and now I want to say wasted two, three years of her career. Now getting going back to square one. She has a strong fan base like the Foras, like a lot of these other people who are out there doing it independently. Uh, but she definitely has the talent to be one of the top artists in the game because she's she's very uh, versatile. But unfortunately, um, you know, it just doesn't seem like she's gonna ever plateau and recover. Hit, yeah. hit, hit that. Hit I, that I don't think she has star power, and I think that's that's the problem with females. If you don't have star power. You're not gonna get like, for instance, Rhapsody is dope as fuck, but right. she just doesn't have star power, so she's not gonna get that that I, look. I just don't think she has the in- industry sex appeal when we're talking about Rhapsody that people are looking for. Yeah. I think unfortunately, because you know, Jean Grey has star power, Bahamadi, in my opinion, had star power, uh, Latifah has had star power, but they, but Latifah's probably the one, Latifah and Missy are probably the two exceptions to hip hop's. Uh, See, but that, that's when the music was gauged off of the music. You know what I mean? This shit is not gauged off of the music now. You know what I well, mean? Well, I mean, Latifah era, MC Light, you know, definitely gauged by the music. Missy, you had Trina's in the mix. Little Kim had been around. So you had already you had already sexualized the female MC. You know what I mean? But that's, and it kind of strange that, like, majority of the ones you just mentioned, they had to act like they like dick in order to make it. 
Oh, oh yeah. And so that's what Snow's not gonna do. Yeah. Snow's bisexual. She's not gonna pretend to, you know, she's with a chick. She's not gonna pretend to be anything else. And the large label doesn't know how to to, to push that out there. You know what I mean? Then if I'm Atlantic But even if she was about that lifestyle, I still don't think she has the uh the character or, you know, the, the charisma to be on a Cardi level. Nah, I'm, I'm not, because she's not gonna make that type of music. But she could. We, but even if she did, I don't think that there's she would reach that. If she if she pretended to like dudes, there's definitely a level that she could be on where. Um, oh, she'll be elevated she'll where be, she's at. She but. would be very very successful and sell millions of records to that fan base. But she would be international star like Cardi. Nah. No, because she doesn't have that type of personality. Yeah. Sexu- sexuality aside, she doesn't have the same personality that Cardi has. Um, that was evident from early on when she was annoying people on fucking love and hip hop. Like I didn't like it the first time I saw her. I don't know who she is. She's annoying as fuck. I'm, she makes music. She can barely talk. They invested, put time in her. Got her the right writing team. And there's yeah, there's songs on uh, Invasion of Privacy that I fuck with that are well written, good songs. And I'll stand by that. You know. Um, but yeah, Snow has a lot of uh, obstacles in front of her just because of uh, who she is, unfortunately. You know what? And, um, not to turn this shit political, but I think, and, I, and for whatever reason, I don't know why the fuck this is. I think the biggest obstacle Snow has in front of her is her nationality. It's being a Mexican. It's being Mexican, yeah. and and, it, and it's crazy because when it comes to uh, music, you know, we've seen people from all nationalities have success. You know what I mean? But why is it when it comes to okay, you could say Hispanic, Latino, whatever, Chicano. Why is it that Mexicans, men and women, don't seem to rise when it comes to the, the mainstream of music? So I had this con- I had a conversation with uh, Alcatraz Rosario. Big shouts out to him. Uh, shit, maybe six, eight months ago, because we were yeah. talking about Takashi and how this was groundbreaking for Mexicans, Latinos, however you want to. He, didn't, he didn't carry himself like one. Though. Right, no, he didn't. But you had people starting to embrace him, and I think the problem is when we and it's not so much political. We got to look at it culturally. When we look at, let's just say, Mexican Americans, Salvadorian Americans, Guatemalan Amer- anybody from Central America, South America, rap is really new to them. Ten years, twenty years, thirty, you know, very still new to them. They don't. They don't know who the fuck Karis one is and stuff like that, meaning the parents. So you're going to get indoctrinated via school, right, or by your friends. Moms and pops are not banging. If they're born in Mexico, if they're born in, in, in Guatemala, they're not banging uh, Easy e in, in, in the house. They're not, you're not getting any, er, any early of that. You know, you're not getting early music. So if you happen to like the music and you want to pursue the music or support the music, it is already an issue in your household because it's not understood. The I'm sure what they're being told and what they're seeing is negative mm-hmm. stereotypes to them, and they don't want their kids really uh, messing with that. So they listen to it, but they don't truly embrace it. And I think it's just now that you start to see, you know, the second, third, fourth generation of Mexican Americans, you're starting to see them embrace the music a little more. Uh, look at how the, we talked about this. I think not on the mic, but off the mic. Look how much Sorenos have changed. You can't tell now. You used to be able to say, "Oh, you man, you got the Ben Davis, you got the ball head." Yeah, you, you know, now you don't know. Cats will come up with fucking cornrows and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, baggy pants. You know, Spiky wearing hair, red. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, shit has changed. Just as our culture has evolved, as far as, as as far as black music and shit like that. Their culture is, is, is evolving as well, and the cultures are moving and becoming a lot more similar. Look at YG Go Loco. You know what I mean? If, if that would have been 10 years ago, cats would have looked at him with a side eye. What the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? Now you have some, you have, you know, shit. I know a lot of Hispanics that say nigga more than niggas. You know, and depending on the nigga, some cool with it, some, you know, but it's more prevalent. And the cultures are starting to merge. The good and the bad with that majority, in my opinion, it's good. Um, you know, as, as the cultures merge more, as you uh, alluded to earlier, Pooh, hopefully we get the gang culture out of that. And we get something else. People just being people liking the same shit and seeing that, hey, we are we are the same in 
context there's some different shit culturally we speak a different language but shit we all about to go loco at the club mm-hmm. or we all about to listen to bad and bougie or whatever it is so um i think a latino artist has an opportunity to go ahead and blow i do think they're gonna have to be from california i do think they're gonna have to be from la and they're gonna have to be a mix they have to ride that line both where where lyrically flow wise they're not your uh essay rapper you know they're not they have they, just, they have that ability and then they can still connect to the stories it, it won't, and they it tell won't, it won't be from LA it won't Why not? Be, it won't be for LA because you think the, the South, shit's gonna, South you think South Siders will shoot not, that shit down anything anything that that, that demean or uh, you know that open up another culture other than your own they're not they're not with that but shit but what if he's there's, a kid there's a standard guideline that uh, mm-hmm. Of shit that they live by, and if you violate that shit, you getting fucked up. You know what I mean? And, and, and if you're doing on a on a mainstream level, right? You're you're done. You know. So what, I mean? what if he's not raised in? Uh, what if he's not raised in a in in, in an essay hood? Let's say that. What if he's but not his, raised in but, your hood? It, but his family is. You well, know. Let's what say I mean? they're not. Let's say they're not. Nah, let's, that's not happening, let's bro. Say he's yeah, off that's of, you, you, you know, forget we're in California, bro. Everybody's got relatives in prison, and and that's upstate. That so have to abide uncle, by those codes. Yeah, my uncle's from Florencia, but I don't bang. So my, no one in my house bangs. He's the uncle who bangs. Just the, That's it, my it, mama's brother. If you going against what the fuck they believe in, mm-hmm. they going to get at your uncle, bro. I mean, see, in my opinion, when I look at it, and, and it's, it's sad because people can't, when you want to make it in the industry, you really can't, how can I say it? You really can't be who you are. It's like, um, you kind of have to be like, how can I say? It? Like, our crew is multicultural, right? Right. Like, there's like, we have multiple multiple cultures in our crew, but we all have the same mindset. We all live the same like cultural lifestyle, right? Right. All right. So, I would think it would have to be someone who's who's been raised multicultural because if you come out embracing your culture, it's not going to work. Yeah. Like with Takashi, okay, he, he's Mexican. He he was raised in the East, which is I'm gonna say it's pretty rare because it's mostly like island, uh, you know, Hispanic people on that side of the right. of the country. So when he comes out, he's saying nigga, he's he's carrying himself like, you know, he doesn't carry himself like like he's, coach. Yeah, he's carrying himself like a typical New York New York. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's he's not embracing his heritage. Right. I, and, and that's what I'm saying. I don't understand it, but it just seemed like, you know, with everything in life, there's um. Um, like a, a, a racial division and I don't know what it is like a Puerto Rican or Dominican or whatever they can come out and be as successful as they fucking want to be maybe because on the east coast like everybody's intermingled right like, you and know they've, what I mean? they've dealt they've with hip hop culture it. for a, lo- a lot longer and I think it's just because it's crazy because if you are a Hispanic rapper who is not rapping about gang banging yeah. Hispanic people will support DJ Quick and Mac 10 for the hundredth time at the Pomona Fox Theater before going to pick up your album that they've never heard before. Um, so they're not supporting it. And I just think it's that connection that they have not in their eyes seen someone be successful in making black rap. They've seen the Conejos. They've seen the... Uh, Chicano. The, 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 what's the cats? The high power cats and, and, and stuff Rob like that. And, the Little yeah. Robs. They've seen those guys. But I see. I think it's bigger than that, though, G. You do. Because I don't. I don't think the the like. Just say L.A. Like I've said it on the show. These cats, Dub, see them. They wouldn't be shit without the, the Mexican fans. Of course. But at the same time, that's regional. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't think that the Latino rapper or Mexican rapper, whatever you want to call it, whose family is new to the country and mm-hmm. don't understand, has anything to do with them blowing up. They have to be able to cross over to everyone else. Like I'm saying, why don't like the I white kids you. and the black kids and I the Dominican you. kids? support the Mexican rappers because it's again it's not any it's still it's still foreign yeah it was just like when white boys first came on you know all right BC boys were silly white boys did their thing you know yeah uh, third third place bless you third base was mm, kind of silly you know they, yeah. they were dope kind of silly white boys um house of pain you know jump around I right, it there was a kind of an evolution of that but Vanilla Ice, Snow, it was corny shit. Nobody was really fucking with it in a way, mainstream-wise, until you had Eminem come, and then Eminem births that whole entire lane where 
you know, Asher Roths, and we're looking at different types of white dudes. So I just think it's going to take someone to to spark that, to be the first person to, and that's what I'm saying from Cali, because I think it could happen here, to really spark that to where he can get a cosign, um, and then maybe other pe maybe people then start looking for other Hispanic MCs that can that can spit because they're out there. Said, you know, you like, know. like the, the Bay Area cats or the ones from like Houston and all that. They're culturally different. Yeah, you know what I mean, I think someone from somewhere like that will blow before someone from LA because I agree. The, the LA yeah. culture, their, their politics is not as tough over here. It is fucked up. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. it's, you know, I mean, shit. I don't even. Like King Lil G, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he was he was primed and ready to go, you know what I mean? And and, and take that crossover. He's hitting in the in the southwest and shit like that and then right, you know, right, right, the right. northwest, but right, he, right. he can't get past the Midwest. So, so what about Fora? Even though he's I mean, Fora is I guess the example that we're talking about. He's transcended you know, he does whatever he wants to do. He's out there making his music, he's got a he's got a fan base. No, no, I mean, I, now know, he does. I know he's got shot at and shit like that. And but he snitched, you know, the, he went against the code of the street. And it goes back to politics. So he so for okay, so for so for is not going to have the full respect you know, of the streets. You know what I mean? Because he went against the code, you mm -hmm. know. So like I said, in Southern California, that, that, that shit, I'm telling you, motherfuckers operate daily off that fucking code. You know what I mean? Nah, and the, and the more the more that I hear about it and shit like that, like. There, there's shit that I don't even fucking know. You know what I mean? And, and my, my 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 relatives probably got fucking 50 years minimum. You know what I mean? Collectively, in, in time served and coming home and, and running stories and stuff like that. And it, like I said, they abide by that shit. It it's life or death. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we'll see. That's a. I mean, that that is a that is something we'll have to discuss at a, at a later topic. Cause I don't even have examples to use. Right yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard. I mean, it, it just came off the top because I was wanting like, I agree. Snow can he a rap circles around Cardi B. All yeah. of them, but all she of them. just it, she's never going to get that chance. That. Yeah, yeah. Just, I, and, you know, and, you know, and when you think about it, even like, I mean, we can we can move it. To, I mean, it's a whole different show. Right, right, right. But even like when Jen blew up and the Asian, like yeah. nobody was fucking with that either. Yeah, like nobody. just certain cultures ain't getting a chance. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's but you know what? If, if it was going to happen. It's going to happen this day and age because the young generation who we don't like their music, they're more accepting to shit that we weren't and okay. other people. So if it's going to happen, it'll happen in the near future. And I'm going to go back to saying it has to happen with the support of the people because let's just say, I don't know how many, you know, Mexican Americans we have in America now, but there's a, a lot of them. And so these labels want to find out how can I peddle products to yeah. them yeah. and Asian Americans, how can I pred peddle products to them? And if you can get like... There's a female rapper. Oh, well, let me ask you this. You probably didn't know. You've seen the 2 chain commercials, right? With him and the Asian chick in the hair salon. And they're talking about the phones and shit like that. I, and, I think I knew that. And she said some shit. I had to erase a picture of my grandma to take a picture of my grandma. What kind of stuff is that? I think I knew that She's that. a female rapper. Mm. Her name is Aquafina. She's from New York. I know who you're talking about. You know what I mean? So they're out there. Now the music she makes, her, her people ain't fucking with her because it's goofy shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But... If somebody can connect with their fan base, and again, I think it's going to be the younger Latino Americans who have broken the old school, you know, straight up Catholic, you do A, B, C, and D tradition, and then the second wave of gang culture that came and, you know, you know, Vatos Locos Forever type shit, they've broken that. And that, they're not completely shitting on it, but they're moving into that next phase in their life. So some of those baby mamas, their kids are now... 13, 14 years old, hang out with, with, with black kids, dress like, you know, black and do the dances and twerking and shit like that. That is where I think that, that not saying that that's going to that breed the is, superstar, that's the but is. that's that market that whoever's out there and is trying to make it needs to really go ahead and tap into because that's going to allow them to, to at least have a presence. And then once they have a presence and start doing some numbers, then in my opinion, that's when the labels start calling, and that's when you get that opportunity to make it to that next level. It, it's the only one hit away, because if, if Little Nas X was Latino, then I think the same impact would have been made, because I don't yeah. I don't think that blacks or whatever is the reason why he blew oh, up. No, he no. blew up because it was just a commercial crossover-ass track, and it yeah. worked. Yeah, and it works, and it fit 
with a, a group of people who wanted, who needed that, and they're and if you need something, you're gonna be accepting of wherever the fuck it's coming from. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? You don't care. You know what I mean? And if it's the masses, they don't care about the authenticity. Does it make me happy? Do my kids like it? Can I play it at the family reunion cookout? Can I play it at the school dance? Good to go. Yeah, and you know a perfect example of um how the old guard, the old you know code doesn't fucking matter no more. If Takashi get out of jail and continues to make his type of music, this new generation don't give a fuck about telling. Oh, they tried to rob him. They fuck his bitch. I would have told too. He's yeah. still gonna be successful. Maybe not to the street and rapping that shit, but watch what happens. Yeah, and you know what? That situation sad. I don't know if you guys have seen the uh, Father's Day video that his baby mama put out or whatever, uh-huh. where she's coming out of the building and and uh, she's. Uh, She's coming out of the building with one of her friends, and then there's like a group of people, and there's a kid with the or there's a dude with the rainbow, and she's like, "Hey, girl, is that your baby daddy?" And she's like, "Oh, snitch nine, and all this kind of stuff." Just talking really bad about him. Dude turns around, and you know he's doing all the Takashi's little impersonations or whatever, and uh, it, it was it was just poor taste. Sad situation, him being locked up. Sad situation, she's she's out here acting like a bird. Uh, you know, it, it's too bad. But yeah, I agree with you. He can't come home and, and think he's going to be able to do what he's going to do. I hope he does come home. And if he does, he can raise his daughter and change his life. But uh, yeah, if he comes home and is able to walk around and make the same type of music, then yeah, this generation of hip hop is, is truly done. Truly done. Yeah, you think done? Uh, not like the, not like they're going to stop putting out music, but we just can't discuss it anymore. People will say, and Rick Ross dropped a new track. Rick Ross has an album coming, a book coming. So people will say, well, we fuck with, well, not we, but people fuck with Rick Ross. And so is it the same? The the the, the CO who's now the biggest drug dealer in the history of drug dealing and the kid who never was a gangster, never really did some shit, got caught up in some shit, and now is snitching? I mean, is can we... Is that I mean, the same? it's been accepted because it was the generation after us that accepted all this sucker shit. The, you know, the Rick Ross and the CO and all that. I, I, the Wayne, we're Crips, now we Bloods. You know what I mean? Like, that shit has all become... that. It's already been acceptable or accepted. You know what I mean? And, and they're just... But yeah, it's just cool was the, saying the generation before that had Frank Lucas and all these other Alpo, all these other snitch dudes walking around too, right? So it seems like it's something that's been accepted in pockets. It, it, it just, I I honestly feel like um, the old rules are slowly dying. Like snitching is 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 accepted now because um, there's 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 some shit that I heard in the streets and it's very true. You just can't call everybody a snitch. This nigga could be a snitch, but this motherfucker's a killer, and. It, you gotta be a certain pedigree to call a nigga snitch because you can lose your life to that fucking snitch. You know what I mean? It's just seen like this day and age because he has this credibility of what he did before he snitched. He come home and he's accepted. So it just seemed like that old way of thinking is slowly but surely dying. You know yeah. what I mean? Some of us still live by that shit, but then I hear real niggas say, man, this nigga's in there doing a hundred years. If they could tell on somebody now, they would, and he's still respected. Like, you know, and I know we've been veered all the way to fuck nah, off. Nah, it's, it's all good. But it's I, I've heard some new shit. I don't know if y'all are familiar with Rayful Edmonds out of D.C. Mm-mm. One of the biggest drug dealers out there in the 80s, early 90s, wherever he went down. It, it was a rumor that he started telling. Now, this this shit is what fucked me up, and I know you, you can appreciate this, son. You're just learning this shit if you haven't heard it. This nigga, he's been down for 30 years. They gave him life. It's to the point now where he's supposedly home. But he had life. He wasn't supposed to come home. Niggas are getting... They family on the street to tell to make them come home now. Now what kind of shit is that? Mm, so I'm if you my baby mama or my cousin, you snitching on somebody for me, like oh I'll I'll tell you who did A B C and D, but you need to bring my dude home. That's what's going wow. on. Wow, that's a whole nother level. That's a whole nother level. But I mean that's shit. It, that's been going on since the beginning. You know what I mean? As far as not expanding to that extent. But you know, fucking snitch testify. You know what I mean? Shit, we do something, we do something together, or whatever. You know, shit, we both looking at thirty. But if I tell you know what really happened, then shit, I'm gonna throw poo under the bus for you know thirty, and I'm getting five. You know what I mean? Yeah. That shit's been going on since the beginning of it, man. It's, 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 you I know, just, I think culturally, well, I'm not even gonna say culturally. I just think that whole way of thinking, um, the code of silence and honor and all that shit, is, 
slowly but surely eroding. And the, the new generation doesn't give a fuck about none of that. Nah, hell um, no. It, it's all the way around. The game is different. Like, I was thinking while we were having a discussion earlier on this on the hip hop subjects. Before you had to, you know, you had people who had developed you as artists. Nowadays, it's it's about um, a one hit wonder or your social media following, how you look. It all plays a feature in how you blow up. Like. If this was the 90s and social media was out, a nigga like Craig Mack wouldn't have made it. No. Biggie, no. Biggie wouldn't have made it. R.I.P. R.I.P. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and that's not judging a man. No, but, but I that, feel That's you. just the way it goes. Yeah. Like no every, one, no 16 year old girl ever had Biggie on her wall. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just, it's a different day and age. Yeah. You know? That's real spit. So, gentlemen, before we get out of here, anything that you guys want to say before we, before we shake? Stop snitching. Kind of, I'm, I'm all over the map. My mind is still racing on the shit we were talking about. But, um, yeah, no, that's all good, man. You know I mean? we, had, we, we definitely had a good one today. We want to thank you for, uh, shit, hanging out with us almost about an hour and 30 minutes. We want to shout out everybody who listens to the show on a regular basis. Big shout out to uh, Miss Thomas, one of our new listeners. We appreciate you listening to us on your ride into uh, work. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, also, again, you know where to find us. Tonight's honest conversation about hip-hop. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram, on Twitter, all over this world wide web. Uh, I am your host, D. Moraney, as always, with San Capone and Big Pooh. Um, and shit, until next week, uh, we'll see you when we see you. Peace. Peace.